Today we're gonna to learn about pollinating vegetables. Which ones are self-pollinating and which ones are not and how to pollinate them if you need to. So pollination is required in order for a plant to set fruit. And by fruit, I mean all of the vegetables that you eat that contain seeds. Many plants are self-pollinating, such as these peppers and these tomatoes. That simply means they have the male and female parts of the flower that are required for fertilization and for fruit to form all within the same flower. So this beautiful little pepper flower contains both the anther and the stigma which are needed for pollinization to occur. The pollen simply drops and fertilizes within the flower itself. Now you can help that out by gently shaking your plants as you walk by. Things help to ensure pollination, but for the most part, the plants are gonna take care of it themselves. All these peppers formed inside my room under a grow light. And once in a while, I would simply give them a little shake when I remember, but I didn't always remember, and they're, and they're producing fruits just fine. Now I've already mentioned peppers and tomatoes, but also the legume family are all self-pollinating, which are peas, peanuts, green beans, and eggplants and okra are also self-pollinating. Other plants like this lovely little watermelon do require pollinators to pollinate it. That is because they grow separate female and male flowers. And you can tell the difference because the female flower, this is a watermelon, the female flower has the fruit behind it and the male flower will just have a straight stem, like right there. So male flower, female flower with the little bulb fruit on the end. Male flower with the straight stick. So if you feel like you need to help your plant by hand pollinating it because it's indoors or in a greenhouse. The technique is the same for every single plant, whether it's a watermelon or a pumpkin or a cucumber. You take a, I usually use a paintbrush, but today I have a Q-tip. You take a Q-tip and you place it inside the male flower and then inside the female flower. And you go back and forth with all of your flowers until you've got all of the flowers pollinated. I'll show you. I just moved this watermelon out from in my house a couple days ago. And so I had not been taking the time to pollinate it. And so some of the flowers have shriveled up. So I'm going from a male flower to a female flower. Here's another male flower. Here's a little flower. And I'm just going back and forth. And I will do this a couple times a day when they're indoors. And sometimes you gotta look around for the, for the flowers. We got them all. Yeah, see, you can see down there, there's a little melon and the flower has already dried up. So if you ever notice, like on your zucchini plant or one of the plants that need to be pollinated, that the fruit starts to grow and does not get very large and then it dies and falls off, it's a good chance that it was not pollinated. So if they're not pollinated, they can't form a fruit and grow. Um, it happens sometimes. I don't really stress it too much. If I were to see two or three in a row happen, I might start hand pollinating or trimming some of the excess leaves off of my plant so that the pollinators can get in there and see that the flowers are there. But for the most part, the pollinators are gonna take care of this for you. Of course, if you're in a greenhouse or inside in a grow room, you're going to need to do it yourself. So the vegetables that need to be pollinated by pollinators are squash, cucumbers, all your berries, fruit trees, melons, pumpkins. Those things need to have pollinators. And some things are pollinated by the wind, such as corn. That's why you need corn to be so close together in rows in a nice 
group though as the wind blows the breeze takes the pollen from one plant to the next all your grains wheat oats corn barley those are all wind pollinated then there's a lot of the foods that we grow that don't need pollinators at all because they don't produce a fruit that we eat we eat another part they might produce a root like a carrot or a turnip or a radish or a leaf like lettuce and kale and collards or even a flower head like broccoli and we eat that before it actually goes to seed so hopefully that was helpful and that's all i've got so until next time see ya